This is Life Lessons. Life lessons are learned results from our daily living experiences through our journey here on Earth. Daily, we are exposed to change. We find ourselves faced with a new challenge, confronted with a decision, introduced to a new idea, or experience a life-changing event. Often, we reflect on the outcome and our choices. In this series, we will hear from authors, actors, musicians, athletes, and professionals as they share their stories and life lessons they've learned. Author and motivational speaker Fauna Hodel. I was given to this maid in Reno, Nevada, and grew up with nothing but knowing my name, with the promise that my mom had made that she would never change my name. We will hear about Fauna's giveaway and her experience being a white child raised by a black family during segregation. She will talk about a film she produced that tells her story and spreads a message of racial inclusion. Here is Fauna's story and life lesson. My birth certificate actually says Fauna Hodel. It has my mother's name, Tamar Neas Hodel, and it says Father Negro, name withheld. So all I ever had was a name with no reference to who my people really were. In 1951, arrangements had been made for a giveaway. Now, this wasn't an adoption. Don't quite know how that all happened. But when they came into the unwed mother's home there in San Francisco to look at their baby, this baby, me, was as white as white could be. And my mother said she had a fit because she wasn't about to take home a white baby. She was expecting a mixed baby. So this was my start into the world. And Mama had told me the instruction she had been given was that she was to never change my name and one day I was going to inherit a lot of money and that my grandfather was a doctor, and growing up she used to tell me that she could pick up the phone and call my grandfather whenever she wanted to. So it was a it was a confusing time. I was always the pretty little white girl. It was, I mean, it was always white, black. It was growing up at that time. There never was a, what are you doing with that pretty little white girl? And Mama used to tell me that just to say that she was babysitting me because she was afraid people would take me away. My mother worked as a maid. She was working for some rich white people, and she was afraid that they would not understand what she was doing with me because here I was, white skin and not darkening, so I had to say that she was just babysitting me. And they would treat me really special because there I was in the white people's house, you know, with her. And they were treating her like the black maid and the black servant. And I was the pretty little white girl that was, you know, put on a pedestal. And no, my mother, I mean, it, she didn't like it because there I was being treated special and she was not being treated special. So, of course, it created resentment, you know. And it was, I was her baby and she loved me. But in the same breath, I was white and being treated special. I remember watching a movie, The Imitation of Life, when I was only eight years old, and that film dealt with the pain of racism and color. And watching that film, I could relate to to that story, and I wanted to grow up and use the medium to help wake people up and touch their hearts. And that's why I produced a film with Alfre Woodard, Charles Dutton, Jill Clayburg, Tess Harper, Allison Elliott, because when I was dealing with prejudice, you know, the blacks who weren't embracing me because I wasn't dark, and I was always showing my birth certificate that showed that my father said Negro, uh, whites who treated me like I lived with the cockroaches of society, because that, that time was so ignorant and so full of prejudice. We're talking pre-civil rights days. It was hard. It took me many years to find out why this had all happened to me, but it all ties into uh, a story about the Black Dahlia. This Dr. George Hodel, who there's a book out on the market called The Black Dahlia Avenger, he's actually being accused of killing this woman. Well, there was a lot of cover-ups going on, and he had been accused of having incest with his daughter in the late 40s, Tamar Hodel. He was acquitted. She was declared a pathological liar. A year after that incest trial, 
she was released from juvenile and became pregnant with me. So through my own journey, the Nancy Drew in me that was on this mystical journey of uncovering who is Fauna Hodel, searching for my real family, finding this grandfather who lived in Asia. He didn't die until 1999. My film was stopped dead in its tracks in 1991 with millions of dollars in it. And here I am, all these years later, I end up helping to solve the mystery. If you read the book, The Black Dahlia Avenger, The Final Thought Print, you won't know that I, Fauna Hodel, was given away at birth. All you know is that Fauna Hodel delivers the detective that ties George Hodel directly to Elizabeth Short. And as fate would have it, I'd end up in a gallery that I currently work in, in Woodwalk, because my name was never changed. I introduced myself as Fauna Hodel, and lo and behold, this man who had worked the Elizabeth Short case had bugged the Franklin house that my grandfather lived in, and those missing transcripts were found due to that connection, and Steve Lopez of the L.A. Times went and found the missing transcripts. The rest are history. There's been a movie made by New Line Cinema as we speak based on the Black Dahlia Avenger, and we're in the process in my documentary that we're going to be doing out of Mississippi, tying in all these links and the mystery. And, and what I'll do is complete my first film, because it, even though the names are changed to protect the guilty, that's part of the historical piece and part of the history of why this doctor went to the lengths that he did to have me given away, to have a movie shut down, and it all ties into me helping people work their dreams because I certainly know challenge and I certainly know how to never give up. So my life lesson is sharing everything that has happened to me and using the gift of pain to move forward and inspire other people and to work their dream no matter what happens just to keep going keep moving because when you keep on keeping on sooner or later fate does step in and help you Fauna Hodel is the executive producer of Hattie's Pretty Baby. She has also written and produced a live forum theater presentation titled Working the Dream, the Fauna Hodel Story. She has been a creative consultant to a number of artistic projects that exhibit similar ideals in both film and video. She resides in Los Angeles, California.